Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne and psoriasis and eczema and rosacea and digestive ailments of, and autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are your go-to source, 844-236-6010 for good health information. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share or if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions about our truth treatment products, truth skin health treatment products, or our bone broth protein, or anything you may have heard about or read about in the news or in the paper, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. And if you want to purchase any of our longevity products, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you want to buy our our bone broth protein or any of our Brightside Health products, go to Brightside Health Products, or Brightside Health, I should say. No, brightsideproducts.com, brightsideproducts.com. Or is it brightsidehealth.com? Brightside Health or brightsidehealthproducts.com. Brightsidehealth.com or brightsidehealthproducts.com. Okay, we're talking the ketogenic diets, the dietary protocol that is, in my humble opinion as a healthcare professional, the single most powerful way to eat and enjoy food. If you go to your favorite bookstore, if you go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble or wherever you go and buy your books and you take a look at the diet and food section, which I do all the time when I go into Barnes & Noble, you're going to see dozens of different diets and, and dietary books and ways to eat, the Beverly Hills diet, the Rosedale diet, the Super Shred diet, the Fireman's diet, the Mediterranean diet, the Fast Metabolism diet. There's so many of these diet books. You go crazy. But I'm here to tell you, all of these diets fly in the face of how, or most of these diets fly in the face of what is scientifically valid, what we know as scientifically valid, and that is eating fat makes you skinny, basically. And I know this flies in the face of the way we've been conditioned to eat for the last 40 or 50 years. From a scientific perspective, the high-fat, low-carb diet, the diet we've been calling the ketogenic diet or perhaps the modified ketogenic diet represents, in my opinion, the ultimate performance-enhancing way of eating. That means for weightlifters, for bodybuilders, for anyone participating in athletic activities. And if there's a diet that's good for folks who are participating in athletic activities, it's going to be good for everybody because we're all basically athletes just by living our lives. Just getting our butts out of bed in the morning is an athletic event. Just going through our day requires a sort of athletic performance. And if, if a diet is going to be effective for athletes and for, and for folks who are, are, are depend on their ability to perform from a physical, physical perspective for their livelihood, it's going to be good for all of us. So the ketogenic diet is an ultimate way of eating, particularly if you're dealing with cancer or brain and neurological health issues, seizure disorders. It is still, to this day, the medical protocol for, uh, for kids, especially who are dealing with seizure disorders that, are, uh, that Dilantin and Tegretol and other drugs aren't working on. 
If you're not, if, if the prescription drugs aren't working for your seizure disorders, your mainstream physician, if he knows anything about seizure disorders, is going to suggest the ketogenic diet. That's because the ketogenic diet is incredibly effective for brain health, not just for seizure disorders, but for movement disorders, for palsies, for Tourette's, for Parkinson's disease. Yes, for Parkinson's disease. I can think of no more horrific, uh, there's probably equally horrific uh, health challenges that somebody has to deal with, but there's no, none more than when you can't move your body around. And Parkinson's disease, this mo horrible movement disorder that is becoming an epidemic, is nothing more than a sign of a brain that is breaking down. It's nothing more than a sign of a brain that's not utilizing chemistry correctly. And the ketogenic diet is one of the most awesome ways to deal, and, and by the way, any low-carb diet. It doesn't have to be full-blown ketogenic, uh, full ketogenic diet, just eating low carbs, just keeping your insulin and sugar down can have benefits for folks who are dealing with Parkinson's disease. Same with Alzheimer's disease. Same with if you just want mental clarity. And most importantly, for most of us, for the average person, for weight loss. Yes, the ketogenic diet, the lard and butter diet, is the ultimate weight loss diet. I find that so ironic. The lard and butter diet will make you lose weight. Eggs and dairy, of course, are also good sources of, keto, uh, of fats that can, the body can turn into ketones. Eggs and dairy are probably better foods than lard and butter. Not that lard and butter are bad foods, but eggs and dairy, particularly eggs, are amazing sources of good nutrition. Fish and avocado, beef and pork. The ketogenic diet is not really vegan friendly, as you can probably get the idea here. We're talking about lard and, and eggs and beef. But if you're a vegan, you can, might be able to pull it off with coconut oil, which is an awesome ketogenic oil, awesome ketogenic fat. Coconut oil, man, that stuff is so valuable as a food. And I know there's, you know, the whole scandal about oils. Coconut oil is a saturated oil. It's a solid oil. Solid oils are stable, solid, solidity. When something's saturated, when we say it's saturated, there's stuff hanging off of it. It, it kind of grounds it. Imagine a shower curtain. Think of a fat as a shower, a shower rod. If you have lots of stuff hanging off the shower rod, it kind of stabilizes. It makes the shower rod, locks it into place. But if you have a shower rod that doesn't have a lot of stuff hanging on it, I guess a shower rod isn't a great example, but just think of a straight line of some kind. When things hang off that straight line, it grounds it, it stabilizes it, makes it more solid. When there's not a lot of stuff hanging off that straight line, that straight line can become volatile. It floats around. And this is the distinction, perhaps not the best analogy, but that's the distinction between an unsaturated fat and a saturated fat. A saturated fat has stuff hanging off of it. An unsaturated fat doesn't. The unsatur this makes the unsaturated fat less solid. That's why unsaturated fats tend to be liquidy oils. Saturated fats tend to be solid, coconut oil and, and uh, lard and butter. It's the unsaturated fats that are really the problem. And when I say problem, I mean uh, they're unstable. In, in the world of nutrition, unstable is not a good thing. So the problem, the issue when it comes to oils is the unsaturated liquid oils because they're unstable. Does that mean you don't want to have them at all? Well, that's where you know, people differ. And very bright people have different opinions. I'm of the opinion that if you're really careful with your liquid oils, your unsaturated oils, if they're fresh, if they're cold, if you're using vitamin E with them, if you're not cooking, uh, cooking them, cooking with them, or cooking with them at high heat anyway, and uh, if you're not, if they're not exposed to light, if you're keeping them in a dark bottle then there too much, there's too much nutritional value. I've seen it with my own eyes, and I've experienced it myself. There's too much nutritional value, in terms of, especially in terms of the skin, but also in terms of, uh, of female problems, reproductive problems, premenstrual syndrome, PMS issues. There's, and not to mention that uh, putting a little oil in your salad is quite delicious and tasty, especially if you mix it with salt. Oil, oil amplifies the flavor of things. So mixing oil with salad can make the salad Salads really tasty, especially if you put lots of spices. The combination of salads and spices and oil is really delicious, and it amps up the flavor of the salads, and it makes the salads a lot tastier. And you get nutritional value. So I think you should eat oil. I say be careful. Respect your oils. I don't say completely avoid them. I say respect them. And make sure you're using 400 international units of vitamin E every day to help protect those oils. That's what vitamin E is. It's an oil protector. You don't want to do the liquid vegetable oils. Coconut oil is stable. And it's got tremendous nutritional value, especially for the ketogenic diet. We'll, uh, we'll explain that when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. 
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. And we have lines open for you if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or the ketogenic diet if you want to start to leverage the power of lard to lose weight, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of our bone broth protein, head over to brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com, and uh, take a look at our vanilla and chocolate bone broth protein, as well as other fine products. Bone broth protein is a good source. It's actually a great source of hyaluronic acid. Tell me another protein that's got hyaluronic acid in it. By the way, I still love my whey protein. But bone broth, bone broth protein is a little bit, little bit different. It features the proteins that are found in the joints and in the connective tissue. And when you eat the proteins and all the cofactors, like hyaluronic acid and glucosamine and chondroitin that are found in connective tissue, it helps you make your connective tissue. It helps me make my connective tissue. It helps make all of our connective tissue. Eating connective tissue proteins builds connective tissue. Why is that important? Well, 25% of your body or more, I'm sorry, Maybe, yeah, 25 to 30% of your body or so is made up of connective tissue. That's a, lot. That's a lot of us. And when you eat connective tissue, you make that connective tissue. Connective tissue is important for the, the integrity and strength and resilience of your blood vessels. It's important for your bones. Yes, bone health. Your bones are made of connective tissue. Bones are made of much more than calcium, by the way. And if you're dealing with an osteoporosis or bone mineral density problem, you need more than just calcium, and you definitely don't need Fosamax. But there's a good chance that you could benefit from the glycine and the proline and the hydroxyproline, the amino acids, that is, and the chondroitin and glucosamine and hyaluronic acid that are found in bone broth protein. Not to mention for your skin, for wrinkles. Osteoporosis is wrinkling of the bones. Wrinkles or osteoporosis of the skin. Same thing. Same health issue. I was talking to a gal. I was in Idaho this week, earlier this week, and I was talking to, uh, I'm sorry, Washington, and I was talking to a gal about her. Uh, she was worried about her legs. Her legs were starting to get saggy. She was, uh, she was postmenopausal, 52, 53, very pretty gal, and uh, her legs were starting to get kind of saggy. I didn't think so, but she thought so. And she wanted to know what she could do. Well, guess what? If her legs were becoming saggy, so is her skin, and sure enough, she had the same problem on her skin, although not as bad, on her, on her face, I should say. And I couldn't tell by looking, but I could assume that the bones had the same problem, because if the connective tissue is going in one part of the body, it's going in the whole part of the body, and that includes the bones, the face, and the skin. Uh, the bones, the face, uh, skin on the face, and skin on the body, I should say. And bone broth protein, because of its hyaluronic acid content and glucosamine content and amino acid content, is one of the best nutritional supplements you can ever take to build up this kind of tissue. If you're dealing with the, uh, uh, prolapses or hernias, those are also connective tissue problems. Aneurysms are connective tissue problems because your, uh, your blood vessel is also composed of connective tissue and leaky gut syndrome can be uh, at least partially caused by a connective tissue problem, although that in itself is usually caused by issues with food. The, uh, the gut lining is made up of connective tissue. Underneath the surface is connective tissue. So building connective tissue gives you multiple strategies. There's no better way to do it than to make sure you're using bone broth protein. You can find out all about it at brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. All right, continuing on with our ketogenic diet. If you're a vegetarian, use mushrooms, coconut oil. You can also use olives, avocado, maybe some soy products. Some people like cocoa butter. I don't find it very tasty, but you can do food-grade cocoa butter if you like. That's a, that's a ketogenic friendly fat for, for, uh, for vegetarians. The ketogenic diet leverages the tremendous amount of energy that is associated with fat. Remember, fat has twice as much energy as carbohydrates and protein, more than twice as much energy. And that's not just the fat that's in food. That's the fat on our guts and on our butts. The ketogenic diet leverages the stored energy that is represented by our fat butts and our hips and our guts and wherever we have body fat, especially visceral, ab abdominal body fat, as well as hip and, and butt body fat. It turns our body fat into a source of energy. How cool is that? We're all walking around with a source of energy, just like camels, and we just haven't figured out a way to access it. It's like our, our energy reservoir. That's what our fat butts are. It's an energy reservoir, like a hump on a camel. All we got to do is figure out how to turn that on, how to, how to turn on the, uh, or open up, or access, or, or somehow initiate the burning of that fat. 
that's the ketogenic diet. It allows you to burn off the fat on your gut. That is amazing. Instead of our beer be- uh, having a beer belly, or instead of uh, our fat hips being a source of distress, now we got a source of energy because the ketogenic diet, when it's done correctly, will allow your body to be a fat burner instead of a sugar burner, which most of us are. If, you're, if you feel tired or cranky after breakfast, if you notice your kids, especially babies, get irritated or moody if they haven't eaten for a couple hours and then you give them some apple juice or some pear juice and, and they feel better and they're for at least temporarily, and then they're cranky again a couple hours later. You or your di- or, or your kid or your infant is likely experiencing the effects of being a sugar burner. And if you're indulging in a, a typical American breakfast that includes toast and juice and biscuits and potatoes, guarantee you are a sugar burner. Especially if you feel tired at 10 a.m. You eat your breakfast at 7 or 8 a.m., 7, 6, 7, 8 a.m., whenever it is. You eat your orange juice and your toast and your potatoes and maybe some bacon. And then at 10 a.m., you need a nap. Two hours later, you need a nap. That is screaming biochemical distress. I don't know how, I don't know how it can be missed. If you need a nap two hours after you ate breakfast, that is a biochemical issue. You are not running your biochemistry correctly. Likewise, after lunch, if you have sandwiches and burritos and pear and an apple and beans, and then you feel tired around 2 o'clock, you need a cup of coffee, that is an inelegant use of your biochemistry. What you're experiencing or what your kids are experiencing is the perils of being a sugar burner. We're all doing this. Me too. All of us. Because we're encouraged to eat this way. Empires of grain. We live in an empire of grain. We're encouraged by the empire to eat grains, to eat carbs. It's no accident that every year, every whenever the food pyramid comes out or the food plate or food recommendations or whenever government-authorized f- health foundations come up with their diets, they always say to eat a lot of grains. Empires throughout history have encouraged their, their populations to eat grains. The Roman Empire, the, Sum- the very first empire, the Sumerian Empire, the very first empire started because of grains. In fact, this whole period of history, which began about 5,000 years ago, I'm sorry, uh, well, maybe about 12,000 years ago, say, this whole uh, agricultural period. First, we had the, the forager period, the hunter-gatherer period. Then we had the agricultural period. And then after that, we had the industrial period. We're now about to enter into a post-industrial period, and that is super-duper cool. Oh, my God, the technology that's on the way is absolutely mind-blowing. This is a new state. This This is a new state of history, a new state of evolution, in a way, that is equal to the, the hunter-gatherer state of, of evolution or of history, era, if you will, epoch, I guess you'd say. And then the agricultural epoch, then the industrial epoch, and now we're, we are in. We're in it. We got, we're in the post-industrial epoch right now. It is beginning. We'll look back on history and say, oh, my God, this was an amazing, amazing time. Any case, the agricultural epoch was ushered in by grains. And it was discovered that you could build big empires and accumulate a lot of power. Some people could accumulate a lot of power at the expense, of course, of other people by getting everybody to eat grains. And we're still doing it. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We will be back right after this. Welcome back to The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Got five years of information and good health stuff on brightsideben.com and pharmacistben.com with a search engine. If you miss a program, you can review them. Or if you want to send a friend or family member or customer or client to brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com, they can always hit the search, uh, plug whatever they want into, into the search box and find whatever shows we were talking about that particular subject. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. BenFuchsArchives.com. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% gel made with 5% retinol and 25% vitamin C in my transdermal matrix with a little fullerenes. Fullerenes are really cool, high-tech ingredients that improve the penetration of active materials. It's all about penetration of active materials when it comes to skin health. 
And that's the secret, really. That's what I learned in pharmacy school, and that's what I learned as a compounding pharmacist and as the formulator of, of many over-the-counter of many over-the-counter products, is that it's all about what gets past the skin's surface. That's the key. You gotta get past the stratum corneum, the surface, the hard fingernail-like substance. There's an, inv a, a, an invisible layer of fingernail on top of your skin. You can picture that. Super thin layer, but it's like a fingernail in the sense that it's impermeable. It keeps water in, water out. It keeps active materials from skincare products from getting through the skin unless you know what you're doing. And that's where our Truth Skin Health products come in. Our active materials are in what I call my transdermal delivery matrix, which I developed over the course of 32 years of being a compounding pharmacist and a passionate skincare chemist. So the vitamin C and the vitamin A are not just in there, they're in there in a way that's going to allow your skin to access it for maximum benefits, which is why you get instant results or near instant results with our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol Gel by near instant, I'm talking about within one day. And of course, because it's a nutrient, the results accrue. They get better and better as anybody who's used the products. Now, there's folks who've been using the products now for over a year, for, 12, for 14 months. A lot of folks have been using the products now for 14 months or so, reordering. And they'll tell you that the results get better and better and better. And it makes perfect sense when you understand the nutritional nature of the Truth Skin Health products and the fact that they're in the transdermal delivery matrix that helps maximize and facilitate the uh, penetration of these active materials. TruthTreatments.com. TruthTreatments.com. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Mary in Oregon. Good morning, Mary. What's going on? Uh, two quick things before I ask you what I want to ask you. Um, yes. I, I will tell the people that are listening that your, uh, pr your skin products last a long time <laughs> if they're used as directed. All like six months, right? Oh, it at least i know i know yeah. i know and you still get the results right you're getting the good i'm sure you, you've been using it now for how long mary um uh, i've only been using it four months but i i have uh, you know uh, almost everything i ordered still left it, it lasts so long <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome i know that's you know no other company wants to do that they're all it's called down the drain marketing skincare companies and shampoo companies and, and and cleansers and soap companies you know the big boys they want you putting the product down the drain or use smearing a whole bunch on so you go back to the store and buy more i was like you know what what's the point of that all I'm selling you is the active material, folks, and that's why it lasts so long. Thank you for pointing that out, Mary. What else can we help you with? Uh, well, I'll just quickly tell you that I did. I was successful reintroducing Amasite early uh, by way upping by upping my um, enzymes a whole bunch and my probiotics. Like you said, that was successful. Awesome. So, you, so to remind everybody, which, you, you tried to take the Amasite previously, you couldn't do it, and we had you do more enzymes. And probiotics and and it, I was just fine you know that makes you think it makes you wonder how many times do we think we're allergic or we have a food problem when all we really need is to support our body's digestion of that food so Absolutely. Well, right isn't that a good point so if you're uh, for anybody listening out there if you think you can't do the amasai or, or cheese or dairy it may be that you're just missing uh, enzymes or maybe you don't have enough probiotics or perhaps you're not making enough stomach acid so it's always worth starting to incorporate nutritional uh, uh, dietary strategies or dietary supplemental strategies to help you eat your butter or eggs or cheese if you find that you can't do it now sometimes you may just not be able to do it but it may be like uh, as Mary says as Mary's pointing out that all you need is some probiotics, some, some of the ultimate nightly essence from longevity perhaps, some apple cider vinegar, or, uh, or maybe the ultimate enzymes, or maybe all three. And uh, that, that way you can eat your, your cheese and your butter and your, uh, your eggs and other foods that you might, might otherwise be able to, uh, might otherwise have to, have to avoid. What else, Mary? How can we help you? This is my question. Um, with the bone broth protein, uh, I definitely intend to do quite a bit of that. And Have you so gotten I any would, yet? I uh, placed my order the day before yesterday. Okay, gotcha. Um, and so I would like to know how much I can reduce my glucogel because glucogel, mm -hmm. uh, I think, is maintaining for me, but it's not. I'm not, you know, impressed. 
I would I, reduce the glucogel. And, and a couple, a couple little tips about the glucogel and the glucosamine in the, uh, in the uh, bone broth protein. Glucosamine is a precursor. Glucosamine is really interesting. Here's how glucosamine works to stimulate the production of joints and, and of connective tissue in general, not just joint connective tissue, but all the places where we have connective tissue that we talked about a couple minutes ago. Here's how, uh, here is how glucosamine works. Glucosamine is a component of connective tissue, right? It's a, it's a, a piece of the connective tissue. And when the levels of glucosamine go up in the blood, there are parts of the body, cells of the body, that read that as if an injury has occurred. Because otherwise, the body doesn't know why there's glucosamine levels go up. When the glucosamine levels go up, like you're taking a supplement, it thinks an injury has occurred and it mobilizes all of the repair chemistry. All of the repair, repair processes are initiated when the body sense gluco, senses glucosamine present, is present because glucosamine means an injury has occurred. So what you're doing is you're tricking the body into thinking an injury has occurred. So the way you want to use your glucosamine is by putting in all of the raw materials that are important for connective tissue building with the glucosamine. That means the proteins, the amino acids that is, not to mention the peptides, various peptides that are, are growth peptides, and also vitamin C, which is a trigger for the whole production of the whole thing, and probably essential fatty acids and vitamin A and zinc as well. So you got to do your glucosamine with a lot of other things. The neat thing about the bone broth protein is it has lots of those cofactors with it because it's a complete food. So glucosamine supplements are great, and I would, I'd still take them, Mary, but if you're not getting the results you want from your glucosamine, you may need the cofactors. You follow me? And the raw yes. materials. So the cofactors you'll find, you'll, and a lot of the raw materials you'll get in bone broth protein, and make sure you're eating other, uh, supplementing with other uh, sources of raw material, including amino acids, like perhaps uh, a li a branch chain amino acids maybe, or uh, you can do cartilage supplements that have the amino acids in them. You could take extra proline making sure you're on vitamin C with any glucosamine. Anytime you're using glucosamine, you want to make sure you're using vitamin C with it. Essential fatty acids are also important and also probably the mineral zinc and, the, and vitamin A as well. And for that matter, vitamin D. Vitamin A and D are, are both, both very important for helping stimulate the growth and production of things. Tissue, especially connective tissue. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. From Oxford University, ketone esters boost endurance in, 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 in elite athletes. A ketone ester drink, in this case, developed by an Oxford University uh, startup for the U.S. Army, has shown benefits to elite endurance athletes by un blocking greater human metabolic potential. That's a quote, quote, greater human metabolic potential. Basically, they turned into fat burners is what happened, and they got better athletic performance. I'm telling you guys, this way of eating, this ketogenic way of eating is unbelievably powerful. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's see. Uh, got Carl, the truth raider. What's going on? Truth raider? Long time no talk to. <laughs> Jack Sprack could eat no fat. His wife could eat no lean. Between the two, they licked the platter clean. <laughs> Thank you, Carl, the truth raider. <laughs> Just, uh, I guess the example, I guess, is backwards. To me, it sounds like it, because usually Jack Sprack wants to eat all the fat, and the wife won't eat all the lean. And okay. there's weight difficulties, because... One is realizing the power of protein and the other is not. The power of protein and the power of fat. Don't forget the power of fat. Yes, yeah, and fat involved in there. Isn't that Today interesting? How Isn't that yeah. ironic? Like you and I, we, we both probably grew up in the 70s, right? Somewhere in there, 60s 70s, and 70s. 80s, yeah. 70s, right. So is, isn't that kind of shocking that fat is actually, that lard is actually good for you? That you can <laughs> eat lard and lose weight? Doesn't that sound amazing? Uh, it's opposite to what I heard. Right? And it completely flies around. in the oh, face. Lord, we got to cut that out. Oh, that, yeah, right. that, that's going to clog up your arteries. And, and, and right. <laughs> it flies See? in the face of everything that, we hear, uh, that we've heard. And, and you know what? That we're still hearing 
You know, we're, we're encouraged to eat the grains and the carbs, but for some reason, we haven't caught on yet, even though people, so many people are getting benefits from this ketogenic way of eating. It hasn't been caught on by, by the mainstream and by the so-called health authorities that eating lard is actually good for you, and eating butter, and eating, eating something called CLA that we're going to be talking about tomorrow, actually, conjugated linoleic acid, and, and eating fat in general. So what's going on today, Carl? Oh, okay. Today's topic was about beyond tangy tangerine, the base of it, the mineral, the ground grittiness that's, that's in the base of every glass that you make, and then there's, there's the sediment that settles at the bottom right. of the glass. It, yeah. Those are, that's, the, that's like the ground min- earth minerals no, or something? That's- no, the minerals are actually interesting because, yes, I'm, that, you know, that's a very interesting point. The minerals that we call plant-derived minerals are different from ordinary minerals. We, and periodically we discuss this on the program, but it might be time to discuss it again. The distinction between plant-derived minerals and ordinary minerals is the fact that plant derived minerals hang in the water they suspend in the water when the plants uh, when the plants transform the minerals and this is what plants do they take rocks from the ground and they transform them they make them uh, they, they, they actually change the energies the energetics of that mineral so that that mineral no longer will sink to the bottom the way an ordinary rock will if you take ordinary minerals and put them in, in a product they'll sink to the bottom absolutely but what's distinct from what makes plant derived minerals distinct from ordinary minerals is they don't sink to the bottom. They hang. That's amazing. you got rocks that hang in water. Can you picture that? Can you see how amazing that is? That rocks will actually hang in water. And because rocks are so electrically active or have the potential to conduct electrical energy, when they combine with the water, when they hang in the water, a very interesting electrical phenomena takes place. Electrical energy is actually stored in that area. And this, this phenomenon is so fascinating and so interesting to physicists and scientists that actually Albert Einstein studied it before he, before he became known as a quantum physicist or as a, as, a, as a high-tech physicist, I should say. He came up with his theory of relativity after, 20 years after, 15 years after, he was studying uh, chemistry of uh, colloids. This is what they're called. Those things that hang in water are called colloidal particles. And he was studying this thing. And physicists are still studying it because it's a fascinating phenomena how you can generate electricity at the interface, at the connection connection between the hanging mineral and the water. And this electrical energy that is, uh, that is generated and stored at the interface is responsible for life, really. It's how our bodies run. It's how the life force is carried. The life force is carried at the interface between electrically active substances and the liquid that they're hanging in. Colloidal chemistry is that fascinating, and so what you're talking about, Carl. I hope that I, did that explain that. Okay, I hope I didn't confuse things by, by with that digression. No, that's in just, depth, and that's a scientific explanation to it. To it it's quite it's fast, just too. very. It's a very fascinating <laughs> phenomenon how the interface between plant-derived minerals and liquid is electricity, and only the plant only plants can do this. And this is the miracle of plants. And this is why arsenic is not the same when it's a plant-derived arsenic as when it's an industrial or arsenic, or likewise chromium or lead. In any case, the stuff you're seeing is very interesting, is also very interesting. That's a sign of the density, the nutritional density of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. It is packed with nutrition, and in order to get it into liquid, you got to do some tricks. So here's one trick for you. You uh, put a little, put your Beyond Tangy Tangerine at the bottom of your glass, and then put just a little bit not a lot. It just may be enough to, to kind of coat the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, make a paste with it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Make like, what's that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you don't, put a, you don't like put a whole bunch of water in the powder. You make a paste with it, so you put, I don't know, maybe a quarter cup, depending on how much BTT you have, but just enough to cover it. And then you stir that around, and you make a paste to make sure all the particles are covered with water. Then when you add the water in, it will, be, it will go into the water much, re- much more readily because it's already somewhat hydrated. That's one trick. That's, a, that's kind of a pharmacy trick where you, you, you make a paste with the, with the dry substance with the water and then add more water. Another trick is with hot water. Just you just pour hot water in there or warm water or pour a little bit of hot water. If you don't want your BTT hot, you put your a little bit of hot water and that will dissolve it. 
and then you add cold water to the hot water, and that's another way that you can do it. So, or you can add your BTT, this is a little, a little tricky, a little bit more time consuming. You can add your Beyond Tangy Tangerine to your water while you're stirring and add the Beyond Tangy Tangerine slowly. That's a little more time consuming. And then last, but certainly not least, is use a blender and, and just blend it up real quickly. And the advantage, advantage to that is when you spin liquid around, uh, when you spin these colloidal minerals and liquid around in a vortex, you conduct further electrical energy. You add, you add further electrical energy. The movement of the vortex, the, the spinning of the water creates or adds to the electrical energy that's already there. So there's a different ways to get the, all that BTT powder into liquid. Does that help? Yes. Yeah, just one more thing, Ben. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. I have to try that out. I'll, you know, I do that during the wintertime anyway. I try to... I like it hot. Weather, I, put, I, have, I have warm or, or to hot the untangy tangerine, and I sip on that as a, as a replacement yeah, soup. Like a tea. But, uh, yeah, exactly. But uh, the, the last point I wanted to make, would you consider that the, the, the grittiness and those minerals that are kind of seem like sandy over time and use, using that, do they perform as like a cardiovascular clean, uh, cleanser for the vessels and for the arteries? Yeah. They will have, there are uh, there are nutrients in the beyond tangy tangerine, not necessarily the minerals, that have chelating powers. And uh, right. sp particularly vitamin C. Vitamin C helps chelate minerals very effectively. So, uh, okay. yeah, you will definitely have an artery cleansing effect. Hey, i got okay. one more call I want to get in before okay. we go to break. Thank you. Right, before we end that. the show. Thank you so Talk much, away. Carl. Take care, bro. Okay. All right. Uh, got, uh, got somebody here with a question mark. I don't know your name. Who is this? Speak up. Identify yourself if you're there. Hello? Oh, Hello. Hey there. Who am I speaking to? Well, I'm going by Down and Dirty Dan in Florida. Okay. What's up, Down and Dirty Dan in Florida? Where in Florida uh, are you? Uh, Miami. Okay. Well, so what's going on? i got about a minute. How can we help you? Well, here's, here's, I just want to give a quick comment here, just kind of uh, like what all this, this means, this convergence of, of all these events. And I just want to just say to the listeners and to yourself, is that there's going to be a, a point here in the very new, near future, I believe, that everyone is going to be forced to make a very personal and individual decision as to what they're going to do to push back as to what's going on, anticipate what the real agenda is, and stop singing and start swinging. That's okay, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure how that relates to what we're talking about, but it's very interesting. So c c tell me exactly what you're, what you're referring to, political situation, geopolitical, voting, the world in general? I, I mean, everything with, with what we're seeing revealed coming out of the Democratic National Convention and the committee, the almost what I would call the purging of, of the Sanders supporters, uh, uh -huh. you know, all these types of things. And I wasn't really tuned into what you're talking about, so if I'm really off topic, no, I I, I, I always encourage you can comment on anything you want. And I've got to, I, I don't mind talking about that stuff either, although we don't usually talk about it, of course. In any case, that's the end of the program, Down and Dirty. Dan in Florida, appreciate your two cents, although I'm not quite sure about how that relates to what we're talking about. Anyway, tomorrow we'll continue talking about the ketogenic diet. I'm going to talk about CLA, conjugated linoleic acid. Really cool stuff. We started talking about it a little bit last, uh, last week, and uh, we'll continue that tomorrow as we continue talking about the ketogenic diet. Check out our bone broth protein at Brightside health.com brightsidehealth.com and also check out our true skin health products at truthtreatments.com and of course if you want to join the brightside ben team head over to brightsideben.com criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com that's it have yourselves a beautiful wonderful spectacular day i'm pharmacist ben bye for now